Hello, it is a tutorial. I'm going to show you step by step how to make uh, this hat. There is a separate video how to make a scrappy pom pom on the screen in the eye over here. So check it out at the end. And this hat is approximately for two to five year olds. So I hope you're going to enjoy it. Quickly what I used, I used two size of needles, US size six, which is four millimeter needles. And I used US size seven, which is 4.5 millimeter needles. But don't worry if you have only one size of needles, you can knit that too. The construction over here is um, German twisted cast on because I thought I will not have enough uh, yarn to make a fold. As you can see, I had, so this is the one. However, it's easier version to do the back loop cast on method on the screen and just knit hat if you don't want to check how that goes. Although over here we have one by one rib. On that, we have just plain knitting brim section. I think that's how you call it. Then we moved on to the main color and you can put many stripes, many colors, whatever you want. However, uh, after adding with those little slip stitches over here, uh, we have increased number of stitches. We started with 70, we increased it to 80 stitches. We continue knitting and then we are decreasing. And the construction over here is just four points of decrease. It's a center double decrease. And we're finishing it so it's quite easy and fast any questions leave comments down below i will be designing on the go although you've seen the hat i hope you like it and the idea is to knit a hat for two to five year old child therefore having the dk weight yarn which on the screen is the meters and yardage i'm going to start the brim with four millimeters which is usi six and as you can see i don't have a lot therefore my favorite thing to do is knit folded brim let's see and weighted how much i have 13.4 hopefully you can see it okay so my idea is to cast on 70 stitches because it's quite thin decay and how i'm going to do it uh, my plan is to do german cast on method uh, some call it a twisted i think cast on i'm not sure about that if if this is not clear because it's a dark yarn i'm going to put the link i'm going to put a link on the screen to my tutorial with the white yarn so be able to see it better now i'm going to leave the tail as long as number of stitches so what i'm going to do i'm going to wrap 10 and then this is the section of my 10 stitches i'm going to roughly measure 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 stitches. Yarn from the end, yarn from the ball. Like this. So now we're going to take a needle under, pull it, and then we're going to go under the lake, I call the lake, into the lake. And at the same time, we're moving the thumb grab the rope and pull that rope through the lake and let the lake go and you pull it through. So one more time, under, in, grab the rope, pull it through. Remember to go into the lake. Once you get in, the lake turns around and then you grab the rope and you pull it through. And we're going to do that 70 times. Um, therefore, I would say, if it's not clear, again, in the eye, you have the link to tutorial or check my tutorial list. I just like the edge over here. So I'll see you after 70. And first things what we're going to do, we're going to make sure that we have that edge inside uh, the circle. Uh, if you're knitting in the round, obviously you can do that much and then you'll be working back and front. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and because we're working on circular needles, we're going to find a marker. <laughs> And we're going to put it in, mark the beginning of the round. And now, leaving the tail on the side, I know it's a long one for me, making sure we're grabbing the yarn from the bow. I'm going to do a ribbing as long as I have the yarn. Therefore, I'm going to do, I'm going to knit one. And I'm going to purl one. Okay, you knit one and you purl one. Although I'm going to change that purl to a slightly different one. Instead of going over, I'll be going under 
and that way I'm going to have a twisted stitch on the other side. It just I'm going to use it because for me it's faster, easier and will look the same on the, on the right side and the wrong side will give that really nice uh, twisted stitch, twisted knit stitch. I would say practice the proper purl. So you're putting the needle through, move it the needle under the yarn or you can think about the yarn and you move it over and then you have to pull it through. Okay. As you can see, I'm not even going to go back to fix it because at the end of the day, no one will notice. Right? So we're going to do only knit one and purl one until we run out of yarn. So I'll see you later. Here it is, how far I have done one by one. Obviously with my one, as you can see, there are twisted stitches. I still have some la yarn left and I'm thinking that I actually might do a folded brim. It'll be a tiny little thing, but will look really cute. Right, and second of all, I can also show you how to do it. I know it's a darker yarn. I may have a different tutorial, so on the screen, in the eye, hopefully down below a link, um, how to fold and knit, and this is what I'm gonna be doing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the edge inside. Hopefully you can see it. If you focus enough, uh, we have two columns of, let's call it a knit stitch, and between those there is one and a second loop. And it's always like that. I know it's a German twisted cast on, it's a little bit different than a back loop cast on method. It's way easier I, for me at least to see it. But over here you could definitely see one and another one edge, and then we have a column. From that column comes in one, then another one, and then we have a column. So we know that we have two stitches to grab between two columns. Obviously one will indicate the column, another one will indicate the purl column. And that way we will be hopefully following the number of stitches and following exact placement for the adjoining place. So we have, this is the beginning of our knitting and this is my left needle, my right needle. So I'm going to use my right needle to lift this edge, put it on the needle and now make sure I'm grabbing the right yarn and I'm knitting two stitches together. Okay, pull it nicely and then again we're looking for that second one and the second one is just before our column and is the one that a yarn is pulled through. Do you see it? So I'm not putting it back here, I'm putting the next one in and knit it through. And again, I'm going to find two loops. One is here and one is just over here. Tighter stitch. So I'm going to put it in. And knit it through. Right? Just one before the column. And so on and so on. Now you can see it better with this one. So remember there are two loops between two columns on the edge of our ribbing and that's how I know where to grab and what to grab and as you can see I'll see you once I do it all it looks pretty nice right you may ask how I knew that that will be enough for me no I didn't really but I think what you can do just to have when you have a yarn just wrap it as many times as you would have stitches on. So obviously I will be just maybe wrapping 10 times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And maybe on those tens I will do like one, two, three extra. And then I would know that this will be for 10 stitches. So I would say 20 maybe 30 I will be able to do with the rest of it. So I know I'm going to leave it the way it is. And then I'm going to use tips for interchangeable needles to switch it if you have fixed needles. So 
you can change that too. If you're just knitting with one size, that's fine too. What I want to achieve by this is a little bit more fluffy the base of the hat, you know, body of the hat. I'm basically unscrewing and putting it back. I may have some needles like this in the shop. Maybe not the cords, maybe some tips. Check it out. I'm not promising anything because whatever I have there, that's it. <laughs> So I changed that to a size 7, 4.5 mm needles, and I'm thinking what to do next. I'm going to chop this that, that much, and I'll use this to make a pom-pom later on. Let's not forget to put the beginning of the marker, and I'm thinking to maybe have it fun. I'll just to go to orange straight away. First things first, what I like to do, and maybe you saw it on in this finished object, I know I'm showing you socks. I'm going to edit and I don't want to have a straight line of the color so I'm going to go with just knit one stitch okay make sure you're holding the yarn from the ball and I'm going to slip one so that's basically what I'd be doing all around and just to show you the way we slip, we're doing it pearl-wise um, and, and the way we say it because if I wanted to pearl, I would be putting my right needle uh, this way. But when we're knitting, as you can see, I'm putting it from the inside. So pearl-wise from the outside, knitting it's from the inside. That's why if you see in the pattern that you're doing something pearl-wise, this is what we're referring to. As you can see, I'm going to slip marker and I will just knit around. We'll do plain knitting, but I'm thinking of a nice decrease at the top. What's it going to be? So um, we can go by five, we can go by six, we can go by four, and I'm thinking we'll go by four. And because I have 70 stitches, that's not a really nice number to divide by four, and 80 would be way better, right? So 80 by four will be 20 stitches. Therefore, I'm going to increase 10 stitches to my 70 stitches. And it's quite simple to do because if I increase, add a stitch after every seven, stitch it should end up pretty well in the full round um, there are many types of increases I'm going to show you the one that I really like so it's one two three four five six seven right and I'm going to grab the yarn put on the needle knit it through and that's my one increase therefore I'm going to one two three, four, five, six, seven. Again, we're going to lift the stitch and one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I know I have some stitches that I slipped, so you may see that I'm lifting different color. And then we have something strange here, but like I said, I will be counting this as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now, as you can see, I'm lifting orange and I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. And just to be sure, after the seventh one, I know I have a marker over here, but we still need to lift this right leg up of the stitch below and knit it through it, okay? We slip, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to knit it around until I'm happy with the height of the hat. So I'll see you probably tomorrow, but for you it's just in a sec. As you can see, magically it's done. Hopefully you had time to make that far and you're probably wondering for how long you will need to do it. In my case, I knitted for six inches from the edge of the hat, which is 16 centimeters. Thinking we're going to decrease in four points. So we're going to get kind of an envelope um, finish. I like this. 
as we said, we have 80 stitches, so by four will be 20 stitches. And now the last round, I'm going to just place stitch markers on the needles after knitting 20 stitches. One, two, three. And our fourth one is our beginning of the round. And because I want to do a center double decrease, and I know we have 20 stitches in one section, I'm going to knit nine stitches and do center double decrease. Let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now we're going to slip two stitches as if to knit together, then knit the next one and then pull over those two slip stitches over the one we just knit. And that creates a nice central double decrease. Okay, so we're going to knit through the marker, we're going to slip the marker and repeat. We're going to knit nine stitches. Okay, pause if you're not there yet. I'm going to show you how to do center double decrease. We're going to use right needle and slip two stitches together as if to knit. Then, without taking, then we're going to knit the next stitch. Use the left needle, put it through those two slip stitches. And what I like to do Point the right needle towards the left uh, needle and just feel the needle and glide the top of your needle. You will not be worried that something is going to uh, fall. We're continuing that till the end of the round. Okie dokie, so we did the whole round, which is, like I said, when we knitted nine stitches, we did center double decrease, and we knitted till the end. If you checked, that till the end knitting is eight stitches. So we have nine, and then we have eight over here. So it's not really in the center. Therefore, the next round, what we're going to do, we're going just to do knit in the round, like this. And now, instead of knit nine, we're going to knit eight and do center double decrease. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we do slip two, knit one, move to over. And as you can see, it should line up with the one below. And we knit till the end, so probably it's seven. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's correct. So as you can see, any decrease round that we're going to do, it's going to minus the stitch on the right and minus the stitch on the left. So we're going to repeat the decrease round, so this round and knit round. Let's say until we have four stitches in repeat before the decrease stitch, okay? I see you then. No, I'm not there yet, but I'm going to write down on the screen the whole decreases for you to read to make sure that you that I'm properly understood. But anyway, I'm just stopping by because I'm noticing that it's getting very tight. And because we have those four points like that, at any stage, if you have DPNs, so double pointed needles, uh, you can put one over here, one here, another one and the fourth one and work with the fifth one. I do not own DPNs US size 7 4.5. I do have US size 4 which is um, US size 6 and to be honest it is not the end of the world if I wanted to put them on. I know I'm using US size 7 4.5 millimeters but at the end of the day I could have it a little bit tighter in, in the, on the top so do not worry if you don't have so many tools. I don't have either. What I'm going to do I will be basically pulling this more and knitting this way. While remembering that I have to hold those two pieces together. That way I'm not getting any holes, any stretched areas over here. And that is my trick. So I can handle it this way. <laughs> and in a while, instead of having only one loop on right side, I will be pulling another one on this side, having less and less stitches on my needles. Okay, so you know what to do now, I hope. 
let me know down below. Uh, pause over here if you need time because next time I'll skip straight away to the four stitches before the decrease stitch in the center. As you can see, everything goes smoothly, only my beginning of a round fell off the needles. I just finish the crease round and I have one, two, three, four, right? Four stitches, do you see that? Then I have the crease and I have one, two, three before the marker. So what I'm going to do from now on, I'll be just doing the creasing rounds. So in this case, I'm going to knit three, center double the crease, and then I have only two left. Then when I come back, I will then knit two, center double the crease, and I will have only one stitch, right? And I'm going to do the third one, and that's that. So maybe I'm going to show you the, I have, I believe you have an idea how to do it. Um, how I pull yarn over here, I try to have at least one or two stitches over here before the marker so it doesn't fall. Normally I would have another stitch over here, um, but I was just showing you that, so I'm going to pull it in. And I'm going to do one, two, three, center and double decrease, one, two, slip marker, repeat till the end, till the end of the round. Once you've done it, then we're going to knit two stitches and knitting central double decrease and then just knitting one stitch slipping a marker, repeat till the end of the round. And we're going to knit our last round and it's going to be knit one. We're going to do central double decrease. And we're going to remove marker. Repeat till the end of the round. Okay, we even remove the beginning of the round and using scissors, something like this. I like to cut the yarn. Then we're taking tapestry needle, thread it through. Like this. And now I like to still push it into two sections. Use my tapestry needle as if that was a, a knitting needle and I'm going to slip the stitches as if to knit, keeping them on the tapestry needle. Oops. Pulling through, switching to the next side, the same story, slip as if to, turn it, pull it, pull it nicely. And I'm going just to do another round, just to secure the center, like this, and then put maybe the yarn through to the wrong side. That's that. Here is our hat. The next thing what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a pom pom. Uh, I'm going to use this uh, pom pom maker, and this is, I would say, two and a half inch, so five and a half centimeter one just in case you're wondering, but I'm going to do a separate video not to have this too long. So on the screen, how to make a pom-pom on the side. I'm going to use leftovers. I'm going to use little bits of this, but if you want to have one and the same color, just use the yarn that you have. I'm going to use my little scraps because I don't know what to do with them. Uh, I think it is the cutest way to use those little scraps for the pom-pom, as you can see. Because as you can see, uh, this one looks really cute and does not have any of the yarns that I use in the hat because I use all the bits. Um, so I think I'm going to recreate that too. And then the last thing, I'm going to put a tag. I may have some in my shop, so check the links down below. Uh, so you may see the year is not the one that it's now. Therefore, I'm just, I think I go with the gray. Uh, I'm going to use it anyway, and some of you are asking how I was doing it. As you can see, I have a heart bottom and the top, and I'm going to match it. Match it when I bend it, like this. Line up the edges and cut. Now I'm going to take a bigger needle. It is a needle, it's, it's sharp. Uh, as you can see, I have a hole over here, but I don't have on the other side, so I basically poke it through like this. 
Now, next stage for me will be to put the tag on. I'm going to place it somewhere over here, but remember to check, and uh, this is the back of the hat. So before you, I like to do it before I weave in ends. And if I don't, I definitely leave one to make sure because sometimes I get lost. Um, and I think I'm going just to put it over here, maybe over here. So if I put it over here, this will be on the right side. If I put it over here, that will be on the left side. Pick your side. <laughs> right, I do have a video how to put tag, I think. I'm not sure this long one or the square one. On the screen, check it out if you want to. And I think that's all for me. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have your one made. Let me know what tools did you use, what kind of yarn, how many colors did you use. Maybe down below I really want to read all your comments. And if you found that this is quite an easy hat, I will encourage you to go down below, check my patterns, you can find them on Ravelry or Etsy, and go for it. If you have any questions and anything, uh, let me know and I'll try to help you out. Most of my patterns comes with the little tutorials, uh, so don't worry, I will help you out to knit your beautiful hats. Bye. Thank you.